Okay. Welcome, you guys. Um, I'm super, super excited because not only do we have my sister on the call tonight, um, but she also had her diamond documentary go out today. So, so excited. It's a big day for Nikki. And so for her to take the time to get on the call with us and help us out means a lot. Thank you so much, Nikki. Sure. Um, I'm so excited to be on here with y'all tonight. I really am. So I'm just, I wanted to start kind of first by telling y'all my story. Some of you may already know it, but I just kind of want to, for some of you that haven't heard it, tell you it again. Um, I started Plexus solely for the business. I really did not think I had any desire for the products. I didn't know about the health side. I really thought all we offered was weight loss. And at the time, I didn't think I had weight to lose. I had just hit my pre-pregnancy weight, so I was happy. Um, so I, I started for the business side. I was that stay-at-home mom that always had 20 side jobs going. I was always looking for a way to make money. I was couponing, and I was tutoring. I was a postpartum doula. I was... I had my hands in so many pots to try to help make an extra income to help my husband and to help, you know, just for little things with activities. When you have four kids, things get, they pile up. And so, um, I was always, there's always been this entrepreneur spirit in me. So, um, before Plexus, I was doing another direct sales with Vault Denim, and it was a party planning company where you had to have inventory or haul inventory and host parties. And I, and so when Heather brought this opportunity to me, I looked at the compensation plan and it was phenomenal. I've done other ones and this one, it was just seemed too good to be true. And so um, I jumped on board pretty quickly with her and I, I started the products because I knew I had to be on them, not expecting a whole lot out of it. And my goal when I started was to make $1,000 a month. And I I really did think that was like my big goal, like my lofty long-term goal. Um, because before, like, I think the highest month was ever I ever made was maybe 800 and that was hosting a ton of parties and doing a lot of work. And so that was my goal. And, um, about month three, I had lost 15 pounds. And so now I am sold out on the products and I was so excited. And I hit that goal that month. I hit the thousand dollars already in three months. And I remember, when I first got that check, um, driving, I was driving home from lunch. I, you know, you check it on your phone where I was all excited because pay and posted and just, and I just remember being in awe and thinking I have completely put God in a box with my goals here with Plexus. And that was really the moment where I was, I saw the bigger picture. I saw the bigger vision and what this could really ultimately bring for us. And so it's just been a whirlwind since then. And so, what I wanted to kind of talk to y'all today is not limiting yourself in that box that I had originally put myself in. Um, I like to use the term BHAGs a lot. It's a, a term that Jim Collins has coined in his, in his book, Good to Great. It's, it's a big, hairy, audacious goal. I, I love to, to tell my team to set BHAGs for themselves. Now, when I tell you to set a BHAG, I don't want to hear that your goal for this year is to go gold. I don't even want to hear that your goal for this year is to go emerald. I want to know that your BHAG is to go diamond in 2016 because yes, you can do it. Like I, I it's not unheard of to go diamond in a year. So I want you to set big goals. And I want you to believe with an unshakable belief that you can truly do that. This is something you can achieve. Um, now I'm going to say, you're probably going to fail. You're going to set goals and you're not going to hit them. And I actually, I want to see you fail. I don't want to see you fail at that ultimate BHAG, but I do want to see you fail along the way. Cause I want you to think about it. There is no growth without failure. You cannot be afraid to set these big goals because you're afraid you're going to fail. And I feel like that's one of the biggest things that holds people back with this company and with life in general is they're afraid to put themselves out there and they're afraid to claim something and say something and say, I'm going to achieve this because if the world sees you fail, what are they going to think? And so I really challenge you to get past these fears that you might have when you're setting your goals because without 
failure, there is never growth. So when you set a goal and when you don't achieve it, um, you have to use those moments as teachable moments. Now, I, I see people sometimes set goals and not hit them and set goals and not hit them and set goals and not hit them, but they keep doing the same thing each month. So if you're doing the same thing each month and you're not hitting your goals, I really challenge you to take a step back, reevaluate what you're doing and try something different next month. Um, it's so important that when we don't hit our goals and we have this failure, that we use them as teachable moments to learn from our mistakes and to change it up and try something new. Um, one thing that I feel like is, is really key with this business is to keep it simple and keep it fun. What we're doing, it needs to be attractive to our audience. They need to be able to look and see what we're doing. And if they see us stressed out or if they see us working, you know, 60, 70 hour weeks and they see this as a burden on us, they're not going to want to join. So we really need to keep it fun and keep it simple and you need to make it duplicatable. It has to be something that what you're doing, the people under you are doing the same thing and the people under them are doing the same thing. If you're adding five or six people and then they're adding nobody, it's, check out and see what's going on. That's when you know that there's a disconnect. I can see, I can see on some levels, we'll all have somebody that will be a rock star signer and they're not, they're not going up in the ranks where somebody else has only signed like 10 people, but they're shooting through the ranks because their people are signing people and their people are signing people. So, Really make sure that what you're doing is simple, it's fun, and it's duplicatable. So we want to get our teams catching that vision and doing the same thing we are. And with the vision, I think it's important for you to see that we have a compensation plan that is, it pays on team. I love customers, they are great, but our compensation plan, it really does, it pays on your team way more than it pays on customers. And so this is where it's something that can be hard for some people because people can get stuck. When you're still silver, your paycheck, it's gonna be customers. That's the bulk of your money, it's gonna come from customers. And people can be afraid to turn those customers into ambassadors. I see people kind of hoarding their customers because they want to keep that preferred bonus. And they, But if, if you're doing that, you're not really seeing the bigger picture because our bigger picture is we're all going to go diamond this year, right? And we can't go diamond this year with 5,000 PV and no team. Like, you have to have a team to get there. And so I... I'm such a huge believer in, in converting those customers into ambassadors. If you have a customer, I, I like to start, I mean, I'm 50-50 on if I start people as a customer or an ambassador. If they come to me and they want the business, make them an ambassador instantly if they have any desire for the business. But if they come to me and they're really hesitant, I, I'll, I'll a lot of times start them off for that first 30 days as, an, as a customer so that they can make sure they love the products and they can get that 60-day guarantee. But then after that, if we know, if they've been on it more than a month and I know that they love the products, I always offer them the business because you're, you don't want to hold out on them either because they, they might want that discount. And here's something that's so important that I have learned the hard way over and over and over. If you have someone who's a customer and they are not your best friend or they are not your family, odds are really, really good. Their best friend or their family is going to sign up under somebody else. And guess what? They're not going to be your customer anymore. They're going to go join their mom or their sister or their best friend on somebody else's team. And I have lost customers. And then I have found them on my downline as like my level six. And I'm like, oh, there's my customer down there. So, I mean, I, I, I have, and this has happened time after time with me. And it's because I left them as a customer for month after month, and I never offered, offered them the business opportunity. And then somebody else came and offered them the business opportunity, and they joined them. So the thing is, if they're on your team and they're an ambassador, they can't leave you. If they're a customer, they don't have any loyalties to you. Unless, you know, there's someone close that you know is not going to, which 99% of the time they're not. And so just keep that in mind as you're team building. Don't be scared to lose the preferred bonus because you're going to go diamond this year, right? So we don't need those, those bonuses so much because you're going to have lots of pay points coming. So I just, and this is something to get that duplication going, you need your team to see the vision. Like you have to see long term the bigger picture in the full vision. Um, so keep it simple, keep it fun, keep it duplicatable. Um, 
I, I love the idea of, of pushing people to hit silver in that first 72 hours because for, for numerous reasons, you're teaching your team from day one to set B hacks. So we're teaching them immediately set this big goal. And then if they don't hit it, like don't feel like you failed them or they, but it's kind of an, it gets their feet wet on setting goals and then missing them. And then you being there to pick them up and to cheer them on and to teach them how to learn from that. So I think it's great, you know, because it can be, because it can be easy to find three people quickly, but on the, on the same token, it gives, it gives you a chance to see, to push people harder and to see how they handle that. Um, one thing that I love to do with my team is to give them a big goal and just see how they react because you're going to have different learning styles in your team at different people on your team. And some people, when you give them a big goal, they shut down and they're terrified. You know, they're terrified of failure. They're terrified of that big goal and they shut down. And those people, you realize you have to learn to get them through those fears. And then other people are like, you have some personality type. Sarah Taylor is one of the biggest ones that I found on my team that was fun to push because some, you give them a goal and they are not going to miss it. You know, they become very hyper focused on that goal and there's no way they're going to miss it and they're going to do everything it takes to hit that goal. And if you can find a person like that on your team, they are fun to push. And so you just keep setting the bar higher and the bar higher and the bar higher and they're going to achieve it. So it's good to set those goals for your team members in the very beginning, just to kind of get a feel for what their personality type is too. Is this somebody who's going to be, you know, you push them and you're going to keep being able to push them or is this somebody that you're going to need to coach through these fears first before they can really achieve these big goals? So that's another perspective on why I love the challenging to go silver in the first 72 hours because you can got to get a feel for their personality. Um, Another thing that I love to tell my my team and, to pe and my people that I assign is that um, there are so many ways to work this business. So don't just look to one leader and think I have to do exactly like that. Um, I really encourage you to find what your strengths are and and use that to how you work your business. If you love public speaking or you want to get into public speaking, host opportunity meetings, get into doing the Zoom calls, do everything you can to put yourself out there and practice that speaking skills because it can be a huge way to work your business. If you have no desire to teach or to be on stage, then there are other ways to do it. Don't think that you have to be a speaker if you're going to be diamond because there are so many ways to work this. My gift, my skill set is um, is numbers. It's data. You saw my documentary. I'm so assuming most of you did. And um, I have found that the law of navigation is my strongest skill set. I can set out um, goals for people so much easier. I can tell people how many they need to add to their team this month to hit this goal. And I'm able to lay it out for people in a much easier way. And that's my skill set. And so find what your skill set is and try to use that toward most of your business. Now, there are some things that you're going to have to do regardless if you like it or not. You still need to follow up with people. You still need to, um, to share plexus and reach out to people so but use your skill set for most of what you're doing so make sure and then also don't use that as a crutch at the same time i want to say that on the same token i do see some people if i say use your streets they'll say well i don't like to do this this and this and then they use that as a safety net to not try to step out of their comfort zone i mean we do have to step out of our comfort zones because i mean nothing good ever happens in that safe spot so Another thing, um, when you're thinking about how you work your business, I like to classify it into three areas for me. I have sharing, building, and developing. You have to share Plexus regularly um, in social media and public, private messages. You have to share. You have to build a team. Like you, it, it's you have to do that. It's part of our of our team plan to get Diamond this year. You got to build a team, and you have to develop. You have to develop your leadership skills. You have to read books on personal development. You have to watch videos. You have to develop your team. You have to develop them as leaders too, so that they can rise up and they can separate from you and train their teams. You have to develop those leaders, and you have to develop ranks. So I have to, and that's where, for me, like the law of navigation is helping me develop these people 
so that they can hit their, their goals and their ranks. So when you're looking at your day of income producing activity, make sure you're not spending all day just on personal development or make sure you're not spending all day just on sharing plexus. You really need to have a balance between all three, between sharing, between building, and between developing. Um, and one of the last things that I have found that is so crucial with, um, with this business is you have to have an unshakable belief in yourself, in your products, and in your company. And if you ever find your belief is shaken in one of those areas, I really encourage you to get with somebody that it's not shaken on. Or if you're, if you, if you're feeling doubt in the products, go to an opportunity meeting. They're like AA for us, you know, like they, they feed that. And if you have moments of doubt and you go listen to these testimonies, it's like, okay, this is real. This is happening. This is changing lives. So make sure that you always have that unshakable belief in yourself, in your products, in your company. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to end on, I have a quote that I love and, some of you may have heard me say it over and over, and for some, this might be a first time, but it's a quote by Theodore Roosevelt, um, the man in the arena. And I, I, I feel like I can identify our business with this so much, and I just adore it. So I'm going to read it to y'all and kind of touch in a little bit on it. And it's, it's not the critic who counts. And I'm going to stop right there because you're going you're gonna to face critics in this business. And... It's not the critic who counts. Their words do not have value on your life. It's not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena. So when you're getting advice, stopping right there again, when you're getting advice from somebody, don't let it listen to the critic. Listen to the man who's actually in the arena. Take advice from each other when we're all in this together. These are the people we need to listen to. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there's no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause because at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement and who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. So I really challenge all of y'all to dare greatly, even if that means you may not hit those goals. At least we know we gave it our all and we didn't go through life complacent and, and lukewarm, you know, so thank you guys. So does anybody have any questions? Yay! Thank you, Nikki. I'm going to go ahead and end this so we can ask questions. I'm going to stop the recording. Okay.